made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thine outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Oh, nothing is too difficult for thee. Oh 
let's pray please father in jesus blessed name we thank you for this beautiful day and the joy we have to listen to the voice of the holy spirit and to let the word of god penetrate into our hearts and minds and to create in us a new heart and a new mind that is in tune with your word and your will for our lives you have purpose to oh father that we should walk with newness of life in manifestation and so we pray that you will make new everything that needs to be renewed in our lives and we pray in the mighty name of jesus that you would help everyone who are in one accord praying along with me to come to a place where we see you in all your glory and we understand how godly wisdom brings along with it great and mighty benefits into the life of the believer we give you all thanks and praise for giving us a fresh anointing this day to listen to the holy spirit in jesus name we pray amen last week i began by sharing with you about how wisdom creates currents of favor and recognition uh, towards you and we read a couple of scriptures we began also with a biblical example of how a ruler called belshazzar in daniel chapter 5 moved away from wisdom and he started doing things where that were not in line with godly wisdom so much so he received a judgment that came his way now we didn't complete with that example so i'm going to uh, continue dealing with that this week as well but i shared with you from proverbs chapter 4 and verse 8 Proverbs chapter 8 and verses 34 and 35 Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 and 4 and I also began to read to you from Proverbs chapter 23 verses 29 to 35 Now I want to read to you as we continue from the message bible from Proverbs chapter 23 verses uh 29 to 35 so you understand the implications of how intoxicating beverages or intoxicating uh drugs or anything at all that intoxicates a person and causes that person to move away from an established pattern of thinking or behavior is always going to end in tragedy now uh proverbs chapter 23 in the message bible it reads like this now the message bible is one of the many translations of the holy bible and some of these words are written in a way that it uh, becomes very uh, lucid for our understanding and it's easy for us to uh, assimilate the truth of what is communicated in the bible uh, and from the words of what we read in the king james version of the bible verse 29 who are the people who are always crying the blues who do you know who reeks of self pity who keeps getting beat up for no reason at all whose eyes are bleary and bloodshot it's those who spend the night with a bottle for whom drinking is serious business remember what i told you about social drinking there are others who say i only drink on occasions sadly every day becomes an occasion for an occasion to drink and that's what makes people end in misery 
not only for themselves but also for those who love them and care for them now in verse 31 it says don't judge wine by its label or its bouquet or its full bodied flavor verse 32 judge it rather by the hangover it leaves you with the splitting headache the queasy stomach do you really prefer seeing double with your speech all slurred reeling and seasick drunk as a sailor they hit me you'll say but it didn't hurt they beat on me but i didn't feel a thing when i'm sober enough to manage it bring me another drink now that's the pitiful condition of people who end up drinking for drinking sake so to say or so to speak this is how people end up living their lives and the bible doesn't want us to ever come to a place where we compromise on a lifestyle that brings honor and dignity to us that's why when you read about belshazzar the king in daniel chapter 5 i'm going to uh, continue teaching on that example because i want to show you how wisdom when it's in operation brings uh, favor and recognition your way now the bible says uh, they drank wine in verse 4 in daniel chapter 5 and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass of iron of wood and of stone in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote then the king's countenance was changed i wanted to understand till now his mind was in an altered state all of a sudden fear is gripping him and he's coming back to his senses and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed you can imagine this is much more than just an ordinary explanation of what was taking place to the king he must have felt so weak that he couldn't move and his knees smote one against another he started to tremble literally he started to tremble now this was not a trembling that came because he didn't have liquor this was not a trembling that came because he didn't have his shot of wine at the right time like you see some people you know when they don't get their intoxication uh, or intoxicating beverages on time they begin to shake and quake all over now this was not that kind of a shaking this was a different kind of a shaking this is a shaking out of fear and he called for the astrologers and the chaldeans and the soothsayers and all the wise men of babylon i wanted to highlight that in your bible now these men were called wise men not because they were operating in the wisdom of god but they were earthly wise in many ways and when they came they were not able to make known to the king the writing or the interpretation that's unusual they were not able to read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof now these were all wise men they were not fools so that's why i want you to note this down and if you have a highlighter like i have one i want you to mark this in your bible that these were the king's wise men now i want you to understand something here the king himself is a drunk the king himself is a man who is intoxicating himself often and this was not a one off which was happening that day it so happened that particular day he decided to desecrate the things that pertain to the temple at jerusalem now you can imagine if the man on top is a drunk the wise men who sit there in his kingdom are not as wise as they appear to be because if they were wise men they would never have you know uh, allowed the king to come to that place of intoxication they would have spoken to him and told him that it is not wise for a king to be intoxicated 
Nevertheless, the Bible says, Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled. I want you to circle the word then. Ask the question always when, when you see the word then. When did this happen? When he failed to notice any one of his wise men have the capacity to talk to him and explain to him or even read the writing or even explain to him what is written on the wall. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled and his countenance was changed in him and his lords were astonished. Now in verse 10 the Bible says this is, is the queen mother. Now the queen by reason of the words of the king and his lords came into the banquet house and the queen spake and said, O king live forever, let not your thoughts trouble you nor let your countenance be changed. There is a man in your kingdom or in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. Now I want you to notice something here. When all this turmoil is going on, the queen mother enters the scene and looks at Belshazzar and tells him something. Imagine all the wise men have been summoned. None of them are able to read or even give the interpretation of what is written on the wall. One person seems to have been ignored and left out. Now the one who was ignored and left out is recognized as the only person capable of reading the writing and to give the interpretation of the writing which is on the wall. I want you to understand this very well. Because unless you know it well, you will never understand how wisdom operates to bring recognition and currents of favor your way. Listen to what the lady has to say. She says, And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods. Now I wanted to highlight that. Till now we are hearing about the wise men of the king, the wise men of Babylon. But now this queen mother is coming in and looking at her son Belshazzar and saying, listen, there's one man I, I know of. There is one man I am aware of. His wisdom is not to be considered like the wise men you have all around you. They are not in any way to be compared with this man's wisdom. This man's wisdom is like the wisdom of the gods. And in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, your father, three things were seen in the way he operated. Light, understanding and wisdom. I want you to make a note of these things. They are good for you when you uh, read the scriptures to understand the different dimensions and benefits that comes when godly wisdom is in operation. Like the wisdom of the gods was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, it should be actually your grandfather, the king, I say, your father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Now I want you to see this. Nebuchadnezzar had made Daniel head over all the other men who were practicing the occult in his kingdom. And yet, Belshazzar had ignored bringing the one who was above everyone else, thinking, I can ignore the man, I can put him aside, and I can just operate with the ones who are yes men in my kingdom, who I'll call wise men. The yes men are not always wise men. You got to get it right. If somebody is all the time saying yes to everything that you're doing, then something is really wrong with that person who is standing by your side. You have to understand that if something is going wrong, like this king was doing wrong, the so-called wise men of Babylon should have been the first ones to object to what was happening. They should have warned the man. They should have told him, no, don't take anything that is belonging to the gods, even if they are foreign gods, don't take it and desecrate it. And don't use that 
to mix wine and to go into a drunken orgy where everybody is intoxicated and then you start speaking things and in the process you are found worshipping even our gods in a state of intoxication. If they were wise men, they would have said that to this man called Belshazzar. But they didn't say it. So, here you find how Daniel, because of the wisdom of God in him, had already found favor earlier in the reign of Nebuchadnezzar and he had been promoted and kept in a highly exalted place over all the men who lived in Nebuchadnezzar's days who were either soothsayers or astrologers or the Chaldeans who were famous for you know speaking words of earthly wisdom and astrologers over all of them Daniel was placed now she doesn't just stop there in verse 12 she says for as much as an excellent spirit now the same excellent spirit is seen earlier in the book of Genesis chapter 41 where you see Pharaoh acknowledging the spirit of God who was working in Joseph and he likens the spirit that is upon Joseph as being an, of an excellent spirit. Now here the woman is saying this to Belshazzar. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpretation of dreams and showing of hard sentences, and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. I want you to see how beautifully this queen mother is using her words to convince her son Belshazzar. Belshazzar literally means Baal or Bel is the keeper of the king. Now she is saying Remember, Nebuchadnezzar was a far greater king than you. He may have been a megalomaniac, but one thing, he was a world ruler, the first world ruler. And he renamed this Hebrew young man called Daniel and gave him another name. He called him by a name called Belteshazzar. Now you're Belshazzar, but his name was called Belteshazzar. Belteshazzar literally means the keeper of secrets. Bel is the keeper of secrets. Now, that's the name by which your grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar, renamed this man who's called Daniel in the Hebrew tongue, which literally means God is my strength or God is my judge. And she uses the name by which he was addressed in the Hebrew, she says, call Daniel and let him speak. Now he may have been renamed, listen, and I want you to get this right. Not only is Daniel in a strange land, he's amongst a strange people of a different culture. They speak a different language. His identity is robbed by them giving him a different name which is associated more by their gods rather than the god of the Hebrews. Number five, he was made an eunuch in the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar when he was brought as a young man and still regardless of who was ruling at that point of time whether it was in the time of Nebuchadnezzar or later in the time of Belshazzar, this Daniel was not left to die in oblivion. But rather godly wisdom was bringing him to the notice of Belshazzar as being the one and only person capable of reading the writing on the wall and giving him the right interpretation of that writing. In verse 13, the Bible says, Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which are the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? 
I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in you. I wanted to highlight these beautiful verses that talks to us about how unbelievers in high places are made aware of any person who's walking in godly wisdom and who are able to distinguish godly wisdom from the wisdom of men. You must understand this was a man who was just now intoxicated. Now he has come out of a state of intoxication and he is now thinking right and he is still able to understand that he is in a big mess because none of the yes men in his kingdom who are the so called wise men of Babylon are able to give him the interpretation of the writing that's on the wall. They can't even read the writing. And so what's happened is he is terribly frightened and now he is looking at Daniel, addressing Daniel not by his name as Belteshazzar, but he is calling him as Daniel and he is acknowledging Daniel by his name, which literally means God Almighty is my strength and my judge. And he is saying, God will be your judge because you have an excellent spirit and wisdom is found in you. And in verse 15 he says, And now the wise men and the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now the same offer that he made to all his yes men, he is making now to a man who he had ignored but who is now brought before him to stand before him and who is prominently standing in a place where he is the only f person capable of reading the writing and giving the interpretation of it. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be to yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. Now right from the first chapter of Daniel, what makes you know something about the character and the nature of Daniel is that Daniel is never a one to compromise his lifestyle and living for anything that heathen men were offering him. Right from chapter 1, if you read about Daniel, Daniel is never seen putting himself in any place where any of the offers of heathen men and heathen uh, rulers would help him to sway in his stand for God and the things of God. So he's now even looking at Belshazzar. He knows this is a man who's a totally, uh, you know, man whose lifestyle is filled with drunkenness. And he tells him, listen, you keep your rewards for yourself. Give it to another. But I will nevertheless read the writing and I will give you the interpretation of it. From verses 18, or sorry, 17 uh, onwards, and he begins with verse 18, he starts highlighting the dealing of God with the first ruler, world ruler called Nebuchadnezzar, who was the grandfather of Belshazzar. He says, O thou king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar your father a kingdom, majesty, glory, and honor. Now listen very carefully, this is very important for you to understand. There are times when megalomaniacs have ruled the world. Nebuchadnezzar was one megalomaniac, a man who was so obsessed with himself that he even made a statue of himself and expected everybody to worship the image of that statue while he lived. So you can imagine what kind of adulation this man had heaped upon himself while he was alive. Now anybody who didn't do it, he would catch and throw into a furnace that had been heated 
by fire and in his rage sometimes he would expect the fire to be heated seven times more than normal. Now that's exactly what happened in the case of uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego when those uh, young Hebrew boys refused to fall down before the statue and to worship the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Now very very clearly the Bible tells us here that it was God who raised up Nebuchadnezzar. Now this is something like a paradox because we don't expect an uh, ungodly man to be raised up by God but the Bible wants us to understand one thing very clearly that God works in ways that amazes men. That means he not only raises up men of virtue and who are righteous but there are times when certain unrighteous men also come to power. They are used by God to fulfill his plan and purpose not by the unrighteousness that they do but by the righteousness he works with in the reign of the unrighteous men by vessels yielded to his will and plan. For example, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego were all vessels used by God in the reign of Nebuchadnezzar to bring glory, honor and praise to the living God even though Nebuchadnezzar by himself initially was a man who was out of touch with God. Now in verse 19 the Bible says, And for the majesty that he gave him all people, nations and languages trembled and feared before whom? Before him. Whom he would he slew and whom he would he kept alive. That means the man had complete sway over the entire world that he had dominion over and whom he would he set up and whom he would he put down. But when his heart was lifted up, I want you to highlight these words in your Bible. This is talking about Nebuchadnezzar and his mind hardened in pride. He was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. Now this is something that even uh, archaeological discoveries have found that there was a strange malady that affected and afflicted Nebuchadnezzar for a period of time. Now the Bible tells us that it is written like this and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. He said this madness he had to undergo that caused him to be literally like an animal and to live like an animal and to eat like an animal lasted till he came to a place where he knew that there was a God in heaven who ruled on earth and whose reign and rule over men was sovereign. It means as a world ruler it must have been very humbling for him to know that the most high God was not himself nor any of the gods of the Babylonian empire but it was someone so different and it was to him a revelation that the most high God was more connected to the Jews whom he had taken as slaves than to any of the gods he knew who were connected to heathenism and to the Gentile way of living. And thou his son, verse 22, O Belshazzar, hath not humbled your heart though thou knewest all this. Now that's why I want you to mark these verses in your Bible. It's very clear that Daniel is now exposing Belshazzar as not an ignorant man. He knew what had happened to Nebuchadnezzar. He knew how Nebuchadnezzar had come to that place because even in the time of Nebuchadnezzar, it was Daniel who told Nebuchadnezzar of uh, the things that were going to come upon him as judgment. And in fact, the advice of Daniel to Nebuchadnezzar was he could prolong the event from happening but not 
completely do away with it because it was already decided in heaven that it was going to happen but he could prolong the event from coming to pass by certain acts of kindness so it was Daniel who had spoken to Nebuchadnezzar now you can imagine fully well that Belshazzar was not meeting Daniel for the first time to speak with him on a subject that was baffling him but from what Daniel was telling Belshazzar it was as though Belshazzar had purposely ignored recognizing Daniel giving him any importance and even calling him and asking him for any form of counsel from the time he had assumed power as a co-regent with his father Nabonidus as co-ruler in the kingdom of Babylon that's why I want you to know that you can be a person who's purposely ignored purposely put aside purposely rejected by men and then godly wisdom begins to flow in your life and the benefits of godly wisdom will once again cause currents of favor and recognition to flow towards you and bring you back to the place where God intends for you to be remember this always no one can put down a man and ignore a man who is walking in godly wisdom I am going to close but I want to read the last few verses to you before I close now because you knew all this and you didn't humble yourself but you are walking in pride Daniel gets to look at this man Belshazzar and tells him but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven and they have brought the vessels of his house before you and you and your lords your wives and your concubines have drunk wine in them and you have praised the gods of silver and gold of brass iron wood and stone which see not nor hear nor know now this is what I shared with you about what is written in Psalm 135 in fact when you read Psalm 115 also you will see the same thing is mentioned there but you find it coming out of the lips of Daniel in this place unashamedly and without any fear he is talking to Belshazzar and saying you made a big mistake not only did you get into a drunken stupor but in the process you started using your mouth to speak perverse things you started worshipping all forms of gods that you knew you never honoured the Lord of heaven and in fact you took everything from his house I want you to mark these words down please that's why we have a highlighter it's not just now your property because you vanquished the Jews and the Israelites and you brought them as slaves they don't belong to you they still belong to the Lord they are his property they were sanctified for his use and even in the house of God when they were used to pour out a wine libation during the sacrifice they denoted something holy they didn't denote something perverse they didn't denote something low they were used for holy purposes and the Jews they knew what they were using these vessels for but you have totally desecrated them and the God in whose hand your breath is and who, whose are all thy ways has thou not glorified I want you to put an asterisk close to that verse it's dangerous my friends when you live a life that doesn't bring glory to the God who has given you breath to breathe and to live today if you are alive don't assume it's because of your good health your strong immune system your uh, hygienic practices well thank God for all of them but you are alive because there is a God in heaven who has given you the grace and the mercy to be alive one more day that through your life he might be glorified by what you do and say now that Daniel told Belshazzar he had failed to do and because he had failed to do it 
the hand from God had appeared and there was something that was written. Then was the part of the hand sent from him. So this is what Daniel is telling Belshazzar. It didn't just appear because of your drunken state. Now sometimes when people are drunk, they hallucinate. Now this is not a hallucination. He says this hand came from God Almighty and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, tekel, uparasin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God had numbered your kingdom and finished it. Verse 27, tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. A repetition of the word mene, mene, literally means God has numbered your kingdom, finished it and there are no chances of appeal. Tekel says thou art weighed in the balances found wanting and verse 28 Paris is your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar and they clothed Daniel with scarlet put a chain of gold about his neck, made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Verse 30, In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. Darius the Median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old. Darius was 62 years old when he began to reign. But you can just imagine for that last few hours of Belshazzar's life on this earth, he honored Daniel. He kept his word and made him the third ruler of the kingdom. You can imagine a Jew being made a ruler of a Babylonian kingdom. If you keep the kind of hatred some of the nations in the Middle East do have for Israel and the inhabitants of Israel. You can imagine fully well what it must have been in Daniel's day for a Jew to be a ruler in a Babylonian kingdom. But that's what exactly happened. And that's why we are learning about the benefits of godly wisdom when it works in a man's life. Godly wisdom will raise you up to rulership positions and bring you to a place where you are recognized for the wisdom of God that flows in your life and works through you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to you in Jesus' mighty name. We are grateful for this beautiful day and all the things that we have learned about godly wisdom and the benefits of godly wisdom. I know, Father, that we are not led by your Spirit to learn about these things just for the sake of learning about some topic, O oh Father. But you are opening the eyes of our understanding. So each one of us who are making ourselves available to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit are being made aware of the benefits that comes from godly wisdom, some of which you have shared with us in the last few weeks and especially in the last week and this week about how recognition and favor will always flow towards a man or a woman who is walking in godly wisdom. We pray, O oh Father, right now that everyone who is listening would be submissive to the blessed Holy Spirit and his call to let wisdom have her good work in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, you have shown us a difference that lies between earthly wisdom or even the wisdom that comes from the occult and how high and different and holy godly wisdom is. We pray that 
Godly wisdom would prevail in the lives of your children. I pray that if there's someone here who's listening to the sound of my voice, who's been dabbling with witchcraft or astrology or palmistry or tarot card reading or anything at all that is hinging on the occult and occultic practices, and they have been opening themselves up to astrology and predictions of men. O oh God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that they would see how superior the wisdom of God is that is associated with the Spirit of God who is the Spirit of excellence. I pray in the name of Jesus that they will submit themselves more and more and more to the Holy Spirit and they will stop dealing with any form of uncleanness in their life that can be intoxicating or even that is destructive or distracting in the way it influences their mind and their thoughts and especially their beliefs. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, O oh Father, that uncleanness will bow before your holiness. In the name of Jesus, let them never give an excuse for playing with the occult. Let them never give an excuse for playing and dabbling with things that are belonging to the dark and dangerous sciences that come from a wrong source and doesn't proceed from the throne of grace or from your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let all uncleanness be bound. Demonic uncleanness be bound in Jesus' name. Let your holiness be established in your people's lives for your glory. We thank you for delivering those who are bound right now in Jesus' name through the power of the cross and through the blood of Christ and the name of Christ. May they be delivered, O Father. And let them be set free in Jesus' name. Let them never, never receive any form of revelation from unclean demons and unclean forces of darkness. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we worship you. Pronounce blessing upon your people. May they enjoy your goodness in the land of the living. May they live long to reap the harvest of your favor in their lives. Let them enjoy the blessing of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. In the name of Jesus, financial liberty to them who are bound in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There are people who are bound, O oh God, in the area of financial liberty from experiencing uh, the, the fullness of your provision because they are indulging themselves in the occult practices. May they be delivered right now in Jesus' name. May the spirit of lack and poverty and all forms of distress that comes from demonic influences be cast out of their lives in the name of Jesus. May the Holy Spirit of God bring into their lives fullness, abundance, wholesomeness and restoration. We thank you and we worship you. And I'm believing, O oh Lord, along with your children, that you will do mighty things in their life for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen and Amen. And may the blessing of God the Father, the blessing of God the Son, and the blessing of God the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us, with now and until Jesus comes again. Amen. And Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friends, I want you to pay close attention to what I have to share with you. Before I say good night and God bless, I want to tell you that if you are given to exposing yourself to any form of occultic influences, some of them are mentioned for us here in the Bible. Like the Bible says astrology or magic or any form of so-called wisdom from some of these occultic books like the 
books of Moses and the book of Barnabas and so many other things I want to warn you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ stop playing with death stop playing with anything that causes death remember Belshazzar was open to all those influences what happened was the very same night he came into contact with the power of God he never accepted what Daniel was saying he never repented there's no scripture in Daniel chapter 5 which tells us he fell on his face he put on sackcloth he repented he didn't he was so proud he thought he could ma make it and he would somehow uh, escape judgment by making Daniel the third ruler and that act of his would somehow win approval with God my friend God cannot be blackmailed the God of heaven the God of righteousness and holiness can never be blackmailed and the Bible tells us he met his own death the very same night he was killed it wasn't a pleasant death he didn't die in his sleep a grand old man in a grand old age full of riches and honor like we read David died when the time came for him to die that's not the death that Belshazzar met he was a young man he was killed in the prime of his life please I implore you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross and shed his precious blood to save you and to redeem you from all forms of sin and evil quit playing with this kind of things don't even for fun read those predictions that come in some of the newspapers some of these books that you find in uh, bookstores that talk about astrology or even predictions or reading of the stars and uh, star signs these are all things that are not the right sources of wisdom the right source of the wisdom of God is the word of God the Holy Bible and the blessed Holy Spirit of God will never never reveal any form of wisdom that is apart from the Bible God loves you and that's why he's reaching out to you live your life as a victor and live your life as a winner always God bless you Hallelujah Stuti Mahima Illa Kundu Devu Niki Chedamu Hallelujah Stuti Mahima Illa Kundu Devu Niki Chedamu Ah Hallelujah 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 Stuti Mahima, Ella, Kundu Devu Niki Chedamu. Hallelujah, Stuti Mahima, Ella, Kundu Devu Niki Chedamu. Alla Sainya Mulaku Vadhipati Aina. A devu ni stuti in cedamu Alla sai ne mulla tu vadhi pati aina A devu ni stuti in cedamu Alla sangra mulla nu da tincina A jehova nu stuti in cedamu Alla sangra mulla nu da tincina Make sure you don't miss receiving our free monthly newsletter, The Pulpit which contains a four-part teaching series on various Bible topics that will help you live in victory. You can read it online by going to christchapel.in and click on ebook library, where you will find all our newsletters available. 
To receive a physical copy of Pulpit, you can go to ChristChapel.in and click on Join Now and fill in your complete postal mailing address along with your contact mobile number and we will be happy to send it to you free and postpaid. Should you want to receive the newsletter via email, do include your request along with your current email ID. Thank you and God bless.